15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition. Lift off at the top of that. Go SpaceX, go Spherex, go Punch. Spherex and Punch on their way to map Space out our universe all. like never before and revolutionize Vehicle space weather range. forecasting. We are T plus 30 seconds into flight and we are currently firing all nine of those M1D engines. And after about 50 seconds, we'll begin throttling down those engines, which slow the vehicle down just slightly in order to prepare. Power to nominal. In order to prepare for passing through max Q, and that is maximum aerodynamic pressure. That's the largest structural load that the vehicle will see during ascent. So slowing the vehicle down. Vehicle supersonic. Slowing the vehicle down will reduce some of the loads that it experiences through max Q. That's coming up here in a few seconds. Max Q. Right on time. And now we have a few events that are coming up in quick succession, so we want to lay them out for you really quick. It's going to start with main engine cutoff. That's Miko, and that's when SpaceX shuts down all of its nine engines on its first stage, which we are getting a great view back, down Jill. the pipe right there. Shortly after that, Stage one and two will separate from each other, and then seconds later, the first stage will flip back towards Earth, while the second stage will continue on igniting its MVAC engine. Now that call out is second engine start one, or SE1, and this burn will last about six minutes. After that, the boost back burn on the first stage to put it back on a trajectory towards landing zone four, uh, which again is back here uh, at Vandenberg, just about 1,400 feet from where Falcon launched from in the first place. Wow, look at that shot. All Merlin engines firing right there, and we have such a great live shot of it. Main engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. Stage one boost back startup. Coming up next, uh, we will see fairing deploy, and that's when the two fairing halves will separate and expose Spherex and Punch to the atmosphere of space. Uh, SpaceX will attempt, uh, they will actually retrieve those fairings off, uh, back down range on Go Beyond once they get back to Earth. Fairing separation confirmed. There we hear fairing deployment confirmed, and we are, what you see on the screen is the fairing separating and oh, showing Spherix and Punch in, on their way to space. Stage one, boost back shutdown. There you see on your screen and heard that call out that the boost back burn is concluding on the first stage vehicle. That's the first of three burns that it needs to make its way back down to Earth. This is the third flight for today's first stage, which previously supported two other launches, NROL-126 in November of 2024 and Transporter 12 just in January of this year. And... You may have noticed some soot on the vehicle prior to launch during the entry burn, which is coming up here uh, in a couple minutes. Uh, Falcon 9 is decelerating by reigniting three of the nine Merlin M1D engines. Now this causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases or the plume, which deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle's surface. And that soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses with each flight, the soot builds up just a little bit more on the outside of the vehicle giving Falcon 9 its distinctive reused look. 
We're just so lucky to have these great views. Again, we have a split <laughs> screen here. On the left side is uh, the first stage, and you see those grid fins. They're guiding that first stage back to a trajectory here um, at Vandenberg Space Force Base. And then on the left hand, the right hand side on your screen, you have the uh, second stage, and you see that MVAC engine is still burning there. Uh, you know, Mick, LSP just works really closely with SpaceX to be able to refly to fly reused rockets for NASA missions. Yeah, Megan, uh, at LSP, uh, we look at all the requirements for all the missions that we have. And as I said earlier, we selected SpaceX for the Spherex and Punch mission. And looking at all those requirements, we ensure that even previously flown launch vehicles will meet those requirements, providing NASA with a dependable and a cost-effective ride to space for this, our first rideshare mission. Yeah, if you're just joining us, hello. We're in your bottom corner right there. <laughs> I'm NASA's Megan Cruz, and with me is Mick Waltman with NASA and also Jesse Anderson, a senior production manager at SpaceX. Now, Mick is with NASA's Launch Services Program, which is managing today's launch, so he's gonna have a lot of interesting things to say to us to walk us through what we're seeing today. And of course, we have Jesse from SpaceX. Really great ride so far. We're so lucky to have <laughs> you guys. Uh, and you know, LSP chose SpaceX to deliver SphereX and Punch to what's called a sun-synchronous orbit, 650 kilometers above the Earth. And SphereX is gonna help answer some of the uh, biggest astrophysical questions out there. You know, like how do galaxies form and evolve? Uh, how water and other ingre key ingredients for life came to be? And then Punch is made up of four satellites that will study the sun and see how it creates space weather that can significantly impact us on Earth. I mean, Mick, we're talking about like, um, we're talking about uh, issues with GPS or satellites, things like that. Yeah, it's stage one entry burn startup. And there we heard the uh, call for the first stage uh, entry burn startup, looking for entry shutdown here in just a few seconds and getting ready for landing burn in just about a minute. Stage one entry burn shutdown. There we have Jesse confirmed engine shutdown for the entry burn. Uh, but back to what you were saying, Megan, about the science of the mission. I know FAR is sitting there looking. We are so happy that we got <laughs> lift off tonight. But you know, the most important thing about these two missions is exactly what you were talking about. Once we get them deployed, the science that they will have uh, to be able to help us here on Earth with some of the things you want, the spectral map of the universe will be incredible. And that solar wind and solar- Stage uh, one FTS has saved. Uh, flight termination system has been safe. Stage That's one, really good news. And it sounds like stage one is on its way back. Uh, so that science is very important to us here on Earth. So we're looking forward to getting these deployed this evening. We do have the landing burn coming up here in a few seconds. That'll be a single engine burn and the last burn that the vehicle needs to land. Stage one landing burn. There's that call out. Landing burn has begun. Let's watch as Falcon 9 touches down on landing zone 4E. Stage one, landing light deploy. <laughs> and such an awesome view of Falcon 9 touching down Stage one, on, landing confirmed. on landing zone 4E, confirming the third landing for this booster. We had applause here on the factory <laughs> room floor. It's a fun place to see. You know, it would have been cool to see it at Vandenberg, I, but this was pretty cool too. Yeah, I was going to say I love the launches, but you know what? I love the way SpaceX makes landing look easy Thank too. You. <laughs> yes, it's still one of my favorite parts as many times as we've seen it. 